Hey gang, I'm literally raising the stand-up desk as we go live. Super, super excited to be here with you all. And uh, thanks for uh, getting us through the technical problems that we had this morning. Uh, if you just tuned in, you would have realised that uh, the internet was completely down. I went live from the phone to let you guys know what was going on. And the internet has thankfully come back up. So we are here live on the WP Elevation Facebook page. Tristan Griffith says, well done, buddy. Glad the internet came back up. Hey, hey. Thank you very much as well. Um, so, hey, I would love to know where you guys are from in the world, all right? If you can, first of all, if you can see me and hear me, just give me a uh, a like on the Facebook page. Uh, uh, sorry, on the comments. Just give me a like on the comments to let me know that you can see me or hear me. And then just let me know in the comments where you are from in the world. Which country are you from? I'd love to get an idea as to where you guys are from. So hit like if you can hear me and see me. And uh, and uh, then leave a comment and let me know where you're from. Andrew Island need 5G backup. Not quite there yet in Australia, mate. Still running off 4G. And in fact, in some parts, running off 3G. So yeah, I will investigate getting a 5G backup for sure. Matthew Delbridge says, all good here. I can see you and uh, hear you. That's excellent. And uh, Nancy Seeger says, yay. All right, where are you guys from in the world? Let us know where you're from. Jo uh, Joan Pounds is here. Joan McGuire Pounds. Hey, Joan is from Colorado in the USA. Excellent. Tristan says, sound is sweet. Good work. Visual is nice too. Tuned in from the UK. Awesome. Ron Person is here from Wine Country, California. Where are you, Ron? Are you up at Petaluma Way? Uh, I, I went up there a few years ago to meet uh, one of my wife's favorite podcasters, uh, Dr. Dave, and we drove up to Petaluma, hired a, hired a Chrysler Roadster and drove up to Petaluma. Beautiful drive. Kathy's here from Perth in Western Australia. Nick is here from Brisbane. Nancy's from the USA. Uh, Ronick is here from Columbia in the US. Tina says, yes, see and hear you, waving from Pandanus Beach on the coast near Brisbane. Beautiful. Matthew Delbridge is here from Sydney. Sue is here from Idaho in the USA. Michelle is here from the Philippines. Hey, Michelle. Michelle's our customer success manager uh, in the Philippines. Thomas is here from Long Island, New York. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So it works. Woohoo! We're back. Uh, what I realized in the last 10 minutes is I can live pretty lean and I can live with just about without just about anything. But I can't live without the internet, man. Connectivity issues are just uh, the bane of my existence. Ron is here 15 miles from Petaluma in Santa Rosa. Beautiful. Ben Monk is here from Newcastle. Andrew is here from cold, foggy Hobart. Yes. And Simon is here from St. Kilda. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, here is uh, what we're going to cover. Just going to make sure this all works. Look at that fancy lower third. Ooh. Uh, Level Up Digital Marketing is here from Long Beach, California. Daniel says, I can hear you from Vancouver in Canada. Awesome. That's great. Um... Currently about 66 people watching live, which is awesome. Uh, Cody Stinson is here from Greenville in South Carolina. And uh, Angie Neal from Scarborough, Queensland. Beautiful. All right, Ron says having some interrupts. Yep, that's Australian internet, man. So, hey, on this call, we're going to talk about the three different types of business models that are best suited to working from home and why companies will hire you and pay a premium working from home. I strongly believe that it is a great time to be working from home and to be your own boss. And Jafe is here from Hobart. Awesome, Jafe, how you doing? And uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit later on uh, in the live stream. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the different types of business models and the uh, and why companies will hire home-based entrepreneurs, small businesses, and freelancers. Um, we did that. Let us know which country you're from in the comments. Awesome. Tristan says, got a piece of kit for you to look at that bonds the 4G plus home connection. I'm all ears, dude. Send me a message. Good stuff. Uh, so what I want to talk about here is, are you looking to launch a business from scratch from home or are you looking to relaunch an existing business? If you already have a business and you are looking to take it up a notch, then just drop relaunch in the comments. If you are looking at starting something from scratch, a brand new venture from home, then drop launch in the comments. So I'll just recap. If you're looking at starting a brand new venture from home, just drop launch in the comments. If you already have an existing business and you're looking at taking it up a notch, then just drop relaunch in the comments just so that I can get a bit of an understanding uh, as to who is who in the room here 
uh, so that I can try and tailor the presentation a little bit for you guys and uh, give you guys the most relevant stuff here. Uh, David Maillard says, here from Brazil. Awesome. Uh, Tristan says, that's the Australian internet issues. Yes, it is. Uh, stop giving me grief about the Australian internet. Um, we uh, are a developed nation, I'll have you know, despite what our internet will tell you. Uh, so if you are launching a business from scratch, then just drop launch in the comments. If you are looking at relaunching an existing business or you've got an existing business and you want to take it up a notch, then just drop relaunch in the comments. Awesome. Seth Kaufman is relaunching. Nick Coupland. Is that, is that how I'm saying your name right? Nick Coupland is relaunching. Nancy is relaunching. Daniel is launching. Simon Kelly is relaunching. Lisa Hewitt is relaunching. Ronick Thomas is a launch. Thomas Bove, Deborah Ruck are all launches. Ida Sentner is relaunching. Andy Windebank is launching. Whoa, too many comments here to keep up. Uh, Matthew Delbridge is relaunching. Yogesh is relaunching. Nigel is launching. David Mallard is relaunching. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, come on, is relaunching. Good stuff. Uh, Andrew Island is relaunching. Jason Grace is relaunching. Susan Bailey Weaver is relaunching. Alice Hore is relaunching. I hope I'm saying your name right there. Kyle Alexander is relaunching. Monte Cristo is relaunching. Good stuff. All right, that's good. So lots of people here launching brand new uh, ideas, brand new companies, and lots of people here relaunching their existing business. So this stuff is going to be super relevant for you, and uh, I want to get into it a little bit more. We're doing live streams all week this week, by the way. I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later on uh, during the call. Uh, but right now, for those who don't know me, my name is Troy Dean. If you you know, there might be a couple of people on this call who have no idea who I am, or there might be some people who come onto the replay who have no idea who I am. My name is Troy Dean. I've been working from home since about 2000. And <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Um, really, since, a, since the early 2000s, I've been working from home when I had a, a quarter life uh, meltdown uh, in my mid 20s and decided to chuck it all in and decided to just come back and uh, do my own thing and work from home. And I've been there ever since. And I've been super happy. I've been on and off with offices. We do have an office on, uh, on Chapel Street uh, in Pran here. Uh, obviously, because of the pandemic, I've uh, come back home and absolutely loving working from home. So I've been working from home for about 20 years now, and uh, it's been an incredible, um, you know, lifestyle. It's it's given me massive flexibility and, and massive freedom, and uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed to have the opportunity to work from home, grown quite a successful business. For those of you who haven't been following me, we have... I started out freelancing, building websites for clients and doing some voiceovers. And then I got into, uh, you know, grew a full-blown agency um, and did pretty well. And then went back out on my own as a freelancer and then got into the uh, digital product space and had some online courses and some software and a coaching program, uh, which is the business that we have now, uh, which is a multiple seven-figure a year business, which has been awesome, uh, been a great journey to, to, to grow that business. And uh, during the pandemic now, we just, my wife just had a, um, uh, our second baby who's uh, just gone four weeks old, little Goldie, who's just gorgeous, little girl. And we have a little boy, Oscar, who's almost three. And working from home again has just been an, an absolute breath of fresh air for me because I get to spend a lot of time with my family. I get to walk out of the office whenever I want, go out in the backyard and watch Oscar bounce up and down on the trampoline. And the lifestyle uh, of working from home has just meant that I've just dropped a gear and, and been able to relax and it's been awesome. And I'm in no rush to go back to the office at all. And my team know that. So I'm not saying anything that's going to be surprising to them. Uh, it's um, uh, it's uh, a very relaxing lifestyle working from home. So um, I just want to get a bit of an understanding also about where you guys are at and what it is you guys do. So maybe if you could just let me know in the comments let me know the type of work you do from home or the type of work that you are wanting to do from home. So what is it that you do? Are you a designer? Are you a copywriter? Are you a coach? Are you a marketing person? What is it that you do? Uh, what type of work do you do from home? Or what type of work are you wanting to do from home if you're thinking about launching something, launching a new venture? Just let me know in the comments, okay? What type of work do you do from home? I'll just bring up that instruction one more time here. There we go. Look at that. No hands. Comment with the type of work you do from home just so I can get an understanding of who you guys are and what it is you do and how we can help you the most. Lisa Hewitt is a website designer 
slash developer. That's awesome. Nick Coupland is a web developer. Am I saying your name right, dude? Coupland. It sounds, I'm saying it how it's spelt. I hope I'm saying it right. Nick Coupland is a web developer. Seth Kaufman does SEO primarily. Cool. Ida Sentner is a web design and digital marketing. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Jess Haridia, wanting to do web design from home. Awesome. Carlo Caniso, I work as a digital marketing manager with a focus on automation and Infusionsoft. Awesome. Ronick is a web designer developer. Andrew Ireland is a website developer. Web development, e-commerce marketing and web agency coaching. Uh, says Simon Kelly with our Mavericks. Yeah, Simon, of course, is a coach at our Mavericks Club Mastermind where we help for, uh, we help digital agencies uh, go to multiple six and seven figures. Uh, and he is a coach there. Ben, website designer and developer and would love to coach. Cool, cool. Kyle Alexander, web developer, digital agency, team around the world. Monte Cristo, my good friend in Adelaide, Monte Cristo. Uh, Matt Vinu says, I do graphic design and web design development from home. Awesome. Jason Sylvester, web design and digital marketing. Uh, Coupland. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Nick. Perfect. Nick Coupland. Nancy Seeger builds websites and web design. Carla Chalmers, freelance WordPress, Joomla tools developer. All right. Anita Robinson wants to offer website marketing services. You're in the right place, Anita. Jonathan does e-commerce and ERP consulting. Awesome. Lily Sky is a relauncher, primarily graphic, print, and logo designer, but considering maybe growing web design. Yes, it's a good time to do that. I can tell you, Lily. Uh, Anish Parsi is a coach. Anish, my friend, you're a legend. I had a call with Anish the other day. He's in Delhi and in India, and he's launched a, uh, a business coaching um, high school students through the university admission process. And he's just killing it. And he's taking massive action. And we had a great chat. We're going to publish that soon. Uh, keep your eyes out for my interview with Anish. Alex Hore does digital marketing. I'm sure I'm saying your name wrong there, Alex. I'm sorry. Please feel free to correct me. Thomas does development. Cool, cool, cool. All right. You guys are awesome. Tristan, digital media agency supporting native English speaking countries. Remote, uh, remove the overwhelm from content creation. Awesome. Cool. Uh, beautiful digital marketing and website strategy. Unreal. Ruby on Rails developer, Jorge Dominguez. Am I saying your name right? I think I am. Beautiful. All right. You can probably hear Goldie crying in the next room there. So this is proof I'm working from home. And also check this out. Oh, can you see them? Ugh. Ugg boots, otherwise known as work from home safety boots. Here we go. These are standard issue. Work from home safety boots. If you're working from home, it is imperative that you have some of these genuine Ugg boots, yeah? They are the standard uh, work from home safety boots. Uh, there you go. Unfortunately, it is pronounced Hore, says Alex. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, so uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. We're all in lockdown because of the coronavirus. There we go. I said it. Where's the swear jar? I have to put some money in the swear jar now because I said the word coronavirus. Uh, but here's the thing. I've been having... So many conversations about this over the last few weeks with our members and our customers and also my mentors. And there's typically what I've noticed, and we spoke about this a few weeks ago, there's typically five types of responses to any type of crisis, right? And the decisions that you make now and how you respond now will determine where you are in 12 months time. And so these are the standard responses and kind of the process that you'll go through. First of all, you're probably going to be in denial. This isn't happening. It's not going to affect me. The whole thing's a hoax. Uh, then you'll probably go and freak out, which is what I did when it first happened, and you'll start panic buying toilet paper. Then once you get out of that, you'll probably sit in limbo for a bit and just wait for the government or someone else to tell me what to do, uh, which is not great because you've got no control. And then you'll get optimistic and go, well, there's a silver lining in every cloud, which is where a lot of people are now. But ideally, where you want to be is you want to be taking control of the situation. Uh, okay, it is like whore, Alex whore. Okay, there we go. Well, I'm going to call you Alex whore eh? because I think it's more fun. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. So they're the five responses, the five typical responses to any type of crisis. And you can see here the decision that you make on the left-hand side of this chart, imagine that's now, and on the right-hand side is in 12 months' time. The decisions that you make now and how you respond now are going to dramatically affect where you're going to be in 12 months' time. Now, denial and freak out, they're not really decisions. They're just instinctive responses. Limbo is, is more of a kind of a cognitive decision. Optimistic and taking control are actual conscious decisions where you have a clear intent about how you want to spend this time. You start making some decisions now that dramatically affect your situation in 12 months' time. So again, just give me a quick heads up. Where are you now? Let me know in the comments 
Where are you now? Are you still in denial? Are you freaking out? Are you in limbo? Are you optimistic? Or are you taking control of your situation? Just let me know in the comments so I can uh, get a bit of an understanding as to where you guys are at from a, a headspace point of view. And uh, Monte Cristo says, Uggies? Yes, I've got Uggs that are over 25 years old. Mine just fell apart, Lily, so I, and so did my wife. So we, I bought her some new Ugg boots for Mother's Day. But of course, I had to buy myself some as well. So we've, got, we've both got brand new uh, Ugg boots and they're super, super comfortable. Uh, as I said, work from home safety boots, I call them. So where are you guys now? Seth is optimistic. That's excellent. Alex is in limbo. All right, Alex, how do we get you out of limbo? Yogesh is optimistic. That's great. Monte Cristo is taking control. Dude, you've been taking control since two weeks before the pandemic broke out. You're ahead of the headlines, mate. Uh, Nick Coupland is taking control. Maureen is taking control. Deborah is optimistic. Robert is starting to take control. That's what we like. Alex is leaning towards optimistic. Angie's taking control. Ida is taking control. Ronick is optimistic. Uh, Nancy is quasi optimistic. <laughs> Matthew is in limbo. How do we get you moving, Matthew? Jonathan is taking control. Ben is both limbo and taking control. That's interesting. Depends on which day of the week it is. Jason Grace is optimistic. Chuck Wood is optimistically taking control. Love it, Chuck. Matt is optimistic. Simon is optimistic towards taking control. Carlo is, well, since I decided not to go to traffic and conversion before the travel bans were implemented, I've taken control. Excellent, Carlo. Uh, Annalise, limbo, optimistic, al alternate. Yeah, alt alt alternating between limbo and optimistic. Optimistic, taking control. Beautiful. Uh, taking advantage of the boom in digital marketing boost from businesses that were resistant before, says Tristan. Excellent. I would expect nothing less from you, my friend. Anita, wanting to take control and stop working for the man. Yes. Thomas is optimistic and starting to take control. Andrew is working towards taking control. Kyle is optimistic, taking control, and has completed the blueprint. Awesome. Good stuff. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Very helpful just to know where you guys are at. All right. So I honestly do believe that there is a huge opportunity right now. If you, you know, a lot of people I've been talking to uh, have been working from home and they don't want to go back to the office. They don't want to go back to work. And a lot of people who already have a business who are now at home have more time on their hands. Uh, and we're, we're actually more connected in some way because we're having a lot of Zoom calls with people. And I think the, the world has changed and the idea of working from home and running a business from home is much more accepted. You can probably hear Goldie crying in the, uh, in the other room there. Proof that I'm working from home. Uh, hi, Goldie. Um, and I think it's a lot more, it, it is a lot more accepted now to be able to work from home. The point is you don't have to pretend that you have an office. You don't have to pretend that you've got a big team. It's totally acceptable to work from home in your pajamas and your Ugg boots and do good work for people and add value and get paid really well. And I think that is a, uh, a huge opportunity right now. I want to talk about a little bit in a moment about a survey that Slack uh, did. Slack, if you don't know, are a instant messaging tool. Uh, for those of you who haven't used Slack, it basically replaces your inbox and replaces email. Um, you probably, I'm guessing that 95% of the people on this call know who Slack are. So they did a survey recently that found more than 25% of knowledge workers in the US. Now a knowledge worker is someone who basically works with the knowledge in their head. So I'm talking about people who are predominantly in the service providing business. We're not making widgets, we're not manufacturing things, we're actually working with our brains and we're imparting knowledge to our clients and getting paid for our knowledge, right? So uh, Slack did a survey recently that showed more than 25% of US-based knowledge workers are working remotely. And a lot of those are working from home and a lot of them are C-level executives. So CEOs, um, CIO, you know, chief executive officer, chief information officer, chief marketing officers, they're working from home. And what this means is that as Tristan says, the doors are opening for people to work from home without having to fight to get the right. And the doors are opening for people who want to start something from home. So I think I'm just letting you know the statistics here because this is a great opportunity and I think that it's it's a great time to be focused on this. So so know that the there has been a shift that's moving in your favor. Global Workplace Analytics also ran a survey recently that showed there's been 159% growth in remote work in the last 12 years. That's a massive stat. And particularly people who work from home are more productive, 
they are less stressed out, and on average, they earn more money. In fact, people who work from home, on average, earn $4,000 a year more than people who do exactly the same job for a company or who uh, work in an office, partially because they don't have to commute, they don't have to worry about buying lunch, they don't have to worry about parking. Uh, so there are, there are financial benefits to working from home. You're also generally more productive, and that's a conversation I've been having with a lot of people over the last couple of weeks, that their productivity is through the roof, and they're less stressed out because they're in their home environment, and when things get too much, they can just walk away, go outside, watch the kids bounce up and down on a trampoline, and have a bit of a reset. Uh, Fast Company also published an article recently, and this is super interesting. So Fast, Pub Fast Company published an article stating the reasons why companies will hire you if you are an entrepreneur or a freelancer based at home. One, they have access to a larger talent pool by not just looking at the people who work for them, right? So they've got access to this larger talent pool, i.e. you and I. Also, they can afford to pay more because they save on rent and infrastructure. Our clients are not paying to rent our office or to lease our equipment or pay our workplace superannuation or insurance, right? And also they speed up production because they can work across all time zones. So companies can just get stuff done faster because they're using people across all time zones. These are genuine reasons why companies will hire you and contract work out to you if you're a home-based freelancer, entrepreneur, or, uh, or a home-based agency or any, any type of service-based business, right? So the point is that the, uh, the opportunity and the timing is really good for being able to launch or relaunch a business from home. Tristan says, spend less on travel and save lots of time. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Cool, cool. So what I want to talk about now is this matrix that I've developed, which is the, uh, the winning clients from home matrix. Because one of the big questions we have from people who are working from home or starting a business from home or have an existing business from home is, I can't, I can't seem to win clients because they don't take me seriously because I'm working from home and they you know, want to hire a larger agency or I'm not even really sure how to reach out. In fact, I had a call this morning uh, with, uh, with a guy in the States who said, who's doing pretty well, had a home-based business for six years, doing pretty well, but really struggles to systematically find clients. The clients just kind of fall into his lap and he's not really sure how that happens and he wants a more systematic approach to finding clients. So I put together this matrix and there's too much here to go through on this call, but what I wanna do is I wanna show you the matrix and then I wanna dig into one part of it to give you guys a bit of a quick win, right? The matrix to winning clients from home is all about mindset, the right business model, making sure you're in your sweet spot, identifying who your beneficiaries are, understanding the four forces, developing your signature system, panning for gold, getting to first base with a client, and then hitting a home run. Obviously too much to go through on this call. Happy to dig into more of the details a bit later, but I do wanna talk about this, the business model. What is the right business model for working from home? Okay, what is the right type of business model for working from home and which one do I think you should either start with or relaunch with? I'm gonna talk about that right now. So I think the right, there are three types of business models that work really well uh, from a home-based business. One is consulting. That is when you actually do the thing for the person. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. The next is coaching, and that is where you help the client do it themselves, where you work with them to do it themselves. And the other one is an online course where you basically teach what it is you do, and then people can access that information and learn how to do it themselves. So let me just walk you through that again. Consulting is done for you. That's where you actually do the thing for the client. So if you are a graphic designer, that's where you design the logo for the client. That's where you build the website for the client. It's where you make the video for the client, right? You do the thing for the client. That's called consulting. Coaching is where you help the client understand how to do it themselves. You work with them, it's called done with you, and you work with them and you teach them how to do it. And there's usually some one-on-one -on -one interaction or you might have them in a small group. The good thing about consulting is that it's fairly quick. You can launch a consulting business very quickly and get clients pretty quickly. The problem with consulting is there's not a lot of leverage in it. So you're only getting paid when you're actually doing the thing and eventually you end up kind of trading time for money, right? But it's a great place to start. The great thing with coaching is that there's more leverage in it. You don't have, you don't have to actually do the thing. You can generally get paid more and the margins are higher. The problem with coaching is that you do need to have a process or a system dialed in that actually gets results for your customers. And you do need some social proof. You do need some case studies. But the margins are, are, are higher. 
The great thing about online courses is where you basically teach what it is you do, put it up online, and then people can access it you know, forever. Uh, massively high margins, tons of leverage. You make it once and continue to sell it. The problem with online courses is because it is so competitive, you need to have tons of social proof and you need to have a great system dialed in. Uh, it's the hardest business model to succeed with, but ultimately it, I think, is the best because it's super, super profitable. But like anything worth doing, it takes time and it takes a lot of hard work. So here's the order that I think you should do them in. It's right in front of you. Start with consulting, work out how to get results for your clients, get some social proof, then put together a coaching business where you actually train others how to do it and you work with them, but you're actually hands off. You don't actually do the thing for them. They do it themselves and you work with them and then ultimately move towards online courses because they, that is the ultimate leverage, but it is tons of work. Now, if you just wanna do consulting and you really enjoy designing logos or making videos or building websites or writing copy for clients and you wanna get paid good fees to do that, that's totally fine. Once you've got a signature system dialed in, you can get paid really good fees to do consulting, and maybe that's what you want to do. You can earn really good money. I've, I know I have. We have plenty of students doing multiple six and seven figures a year, running the business from home, doing consulting. Happy days, you know. No interest in doing coaching or online courses, and that's totally fine. Uh, if you want to get off the tools and you don't want to actually do the thing for the client, then I would definitely look towards uh, working towards a coaching model. Um, and online courses are also great, but I can tell you online courses are a ton of work. So don't underestimate the amount of work involved in launching a successful uh, online course business. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you guys. What I'm really keen to know here is which business model appeals to you the most. Simon Kelly says here, like anything worth doing, it takes time and it takes hard work. Exactly. Tristan says, loving this, great content, and all of these sitting alongside of each other can work really well, but we all know which combo works best. Yeah, absolutely. Which business model appeals to you guys the most? Just let me know in the comments. Is it consulting, coaching, or courses? Just let me know in the comments. Coaching, consulting, or courses? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know uh, which business model appeals to you the most. Uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll, I'll try and tailor some of this uh, rest of this training for you guys. Uh, we have some great live streams coming up this week. We're going live every day this week at the same time and hopefully the internet will be solid so uh, we can uh, uh, do it on time instead of five minutes late. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what's coming up tomorrow. We've got a couple of case studies uh, with people who are running successful businesses from home tomorrow and more case studies Thursday. Wednesday, I'm going to walk you through an epic spreadsheet. Actually, it's quite simple, but it's super powerful. It's the only spreadsheet you need to run a successful business from home. And I'm gonna give you a copy of that spreadsheet. And then Friday, I'm gonna walk you through the entire winning clients from home matrix, which I just hinted at before. All right, Robin is, uh, sorry, Robert Mecklen is consulting. Alex is consulting right now. Maureen is consulting and some coaching. Ronick Thomas is consulting. Seth is consulting. Andrew Ireland is consulting. Joel Mercado is consulting. Yogesh is consulting with some coaching. April Hyatt, online courses. Woohoo! well done, April. Kyle is consulting, awesome. Andre, consulting and coaching. Coaching and courses in the future, says Alex. Yes, Ben, consulting, need some help identifying if I'm ready for coaching, yep. Nick Coupland, currently doing consulting but about to launch a coaching service, awesome. Consulting but all would be awesome, says Lisa. Yes, combination of all three is very, very powerful indeed. Ida says, consulting, although I have thought about coaching and or online courses. What's holding you back, Ida? Nancy, consulting, love the creative process. So do I, Nancy, love the creative process. It's, I, just, I said to my wife last night, I need to create. It doesn't even really matter what I create. I just need to create stuff. I just love it so much. Monty says, progressing from consulting to coaching and courses. Love it. Annalise, coaching and courses. Consulting plus coaching. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, awesome. This is great. You guys are super, super engaged. I love it. Uh, all three would be, cool, would be cool, says Thomas. Yes, absolutely. Consulting, I like to be involved and get my hands a little dirty, says Matthew Delbridge. Just not do all of the hard work, yeah. But I like to think I could coach, uh, hashtag life experience, maybe not a business degree though. Cool, cool. And that is why we love Troy, says Angie. <laughs> Give me context, Angie. <laughs> why do you love me? Consulting, says Sheila, because I love that you love me and thank you for telling me. Words of affirmation are my love language. Uh, so <laughs> I love that you love me, but why do you love me? Online courses and coaching. Yeah, cool. Hey, Helena Denley says, hi. Hi, Helena, how you doing? Uh, cool, cool. Jonathan Holborn says, coaching. All right, beautiful. Yes, they're all great business models. So here's the thing. Now what I want to talk about 
we've talked about a lot. I just want to recap some of the things we've talked about, right? We've identified that this opportunity that is in front of us is probably a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I'm not overstating that. The, the statistics prove it, right? The world has changed. This is by far and away the weirdest and most radical change to our lifestyle that, that we've all lived through, unless you've been through a world war or, or you know, the Great Depression, which I'm banking on the fact that no one in this call has. Um, this is the, the most radical change to our lifestyle that we've experienced. And the world has changed. And the opportunity here is for us to either launch a business from home or to relaunch our existing business. The opportunity is right in front of us. We've talked about that. We've talked about the stats. More than 25% of knowledge-based workers are now working remotely. There is no requirement to have a big office and to have a big reception desk and to have a fancy couch with a bowl of blue peanut M&Ms for your people who are waiting for you. Like All that stuff is done. There is no requirement for that. It's totally okay and acceptable now to work from home and to run a very successful business from home. And clients are super happy for that to happen. They don't care anymore. The world, the world has changed. We've also talked about the, uh, the business models that you can uh, we've also talked about why companies will hire you. So first of all, uh, it gives companies access to a larger talent pool. They're no longer restricted to the staff that they have, the skill set that they have. And also most of their staff are at capacity. And if they want to push projects out the door, they can't use their existing staff because everyone's at capacity and maybe they don't have the skill set they need in-house. So they hire uh, either freelancers or smaller agencies or home-based entrepreneurs to get to help them get the work done. So it gives them access to a larger talent pool. They will pay a premium because they're not renting your office space. They're not paying for your equipment. They're not leasing your equipment. They're not paying for your uh, uh, workplace insurance. They're not paying for your 401ks or your superannuation. So they will pay a premium to hire people outside the organization to get stuff done faster if they have the right skills. And they can work across all time zones, which allows them to get stuff done quicker and to, uh, you know, it increases their production speed. So there is plenty of reasons why companies will hire you. We've also talked about the business model. Um, uh, I showed you the, the winning clients from home matrix. We also dug into the business model, consulting, coaching and courses. So we've covered a lot. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about uh, the different types of work that are best suited for working from home. And also, this gives you some clues as to the type of clients that you can go after, right? Uh, yep, having issues with the internet, working from home. Sorry, sorry if it's a little bit glitchy here. It seems to be all running smoothly on my end, but sorry if it is glitching. Um, I do want to now talk about this survey that Slack did. And in this survey that Slack did, they identified the types of work that can be done from home with little or no difficulty. And I just want to walk you through this chart here and give you explain how it works. On the right-hand side, this long black line on the right-hand side of this chart indicates how much of this type of work can be done at home with little or no difficulty. So if you look at the very first line, accounting and finance, you'll see that almost 75% of accounting and finance type of work can be done from home with little or no difficulty. And then if you just run down this list, the longer the black line is, then the more of that type of work can be done from home with little or no difficulty. So art and design, business development, consulting is a huge one there. Education, I think, has shifted. It says here that about 30% of education can be done from home with little or no difficulty. I think that's changed a lot in the last few weeks because of coronavirus. Education has pivoted to online and we've seen that happen really successfully. Uh, marketing, media and communications, IT and security, product management, program or project management, they can all be done from home with little or no difficulty. So what that tells you is that if you are in the marketing, media and communications, project management, product management or education space or the design space, you can effectively work from home with little or no difficulty. And in fact, you can target these types of customers. You can target accountants and people in the finance business. You can target other consultants. You can target people in IT and security. You can target people in legal, marketing, media and communications, project management, because they are all used to working from home and there is no stigma around you working from home. So I hope you, this gives you some insights and just starts to open your mind a little bit 
about what it's like, about the type of work that you can do from home and the type of clients that you can target from home. Sorry if the internet's a little bit choppy there. Uh, we are still live. It seems to be rolling very smoothly here at my end. I am monitoring it on the iPad here and it seems to be uh, going uh, very well. Um, so I will dig into this and see if we can fix it for the rest of the week. Anyway, hope that's helpful. What I do wanna know is this, why is being your own boss and working from home and choosing freedom, why is that important to you? Let me know in the uh, comments. Maybe refresh Facebook if you need to, like Robert Mecklen did to refresh the stream. Let me know why this is important to you. I do wanna take some questions shortly, but I wanna know why this is important to you guys. Being your own boss and working from home, why is this important to you guys? Just let me know in the comments, why is this important to you that you are your own boss and that you work from home? What does it actually mean for you? And uh, let me know in the comments and we'll keep that conversation going. And then I do wanna take some questions. In the meantime, uh, tomorrow, just a bit of a preview here. My special guest is Noah Britton from the US of A, from Washington State. Uh, the case study is how does this man get clients without leaving the house? We are live on Facebook tomorrow at the same time, 10 o'clock in the morning, Sydney time, five o'clock in the afternoon in Los Angeles and eight o'clock at night in New York Eastern time. And Noah Britton will be my special guest. How does this man get clients without leaving the house? He'll be joining me live to walk you through his entire process for getting clients, attracting leads and converting them into clients without leaving the house. He's been doing this for a long time and in fact has not met a client in real life uh, for the last two years. All right, so Seth says, it allows me to work for myself with a purpose. Awesome, what is that purpose, Seth? Robert says, I wanna be in complete control of my future, says Robert, yep. Roy Green says control. Nick Coupland says lifestyle, ownership of time. Simon Kelly says to design the life I want. Kyle says flexibility and control. Maureen says comfort and freedom. Nancy uh, says, yes, the stream is good now. Monty says can keep traveling the world and live location nondescript, love it. Ida says I've been running my own business for 10 years so that I have more flexibility to be available for my family. I like flexibility, absolutely Ida, so do I, man, love flexibility. Refreshing feed will get you clearer image everyone. Okay, there we go. Too many years working for the man, wanna be my own boss, says Andrew. Yes, 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 what's holding you back, Andrew? Ben says, I've grown used to it, love it. It fits with my surfing activity. <laughs> awesome, love it. Tristan Griffith says, love Noah, he's a great guy. Yes, he is, and he's gonna be live tomorrow here uh, on Facebook answering questions and walking through his entire process for taking strangers and turning them into paying clients. Seth says, my mission purpose, my job is to help other people's dreams come true. Awesome, love it, Seth. Uh, very noble. I became a home worker when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016, says Steve, and I haven't looked back. It's freedom. It is, Steve, and I hope your wife is doing well. Anita says, I have a lot of knowledge and want to help and pass it on to help others. Awesome. I want to be my own boss, says Ronick. Yes, yes, yes. Love it. All right. Hey, cool. I want to take some questions. So if you have any questions about anything we've covered, uh, let me know. As I said, we do have a bunch of live streams coming up this week. We're going live every day this week at the same time. And uh, so we will be answering questions throughout this week. And we've got some case studies coming up. Noah Britton is coming up tomorrow, Wednesday or Tuesday, if you're in the States or the UK. I'm gonna walk you through the only spreadsheet you need to run a successful business from home. And I'm gonna give you a copy of that spreadsheet. Thursday, we've got another couple of case studies with my friends Adam Silverman and Samantha Johnston from the US. And then Friday, I'm gonna walk you through the entire matrix for winning clients from home and give you some insights there. Uh, Helena says, independence, depending on the type of clients, if they're the type that are price sensitive, then they can be lost during times like this, yes. Um, Annalise says, I've been spoiled by it already. It lets me feel like I'm still living my own life while working. Yeah, yeah, when you take breaks, you can take care of stuff, not just time wasted, love it. Freedom, flexibility, and the fact that I can drive and motivate myself in the process, says Matt, love it. Cool, cool, all right. Hey, do you, do you guys have any questions? Leave your questions in the comments. Leave your questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer any questions here. Happy to hang around for another five minutes or so and answer some questions. Uh, and if you do have any questions, now would be a great time. Leave them in the comments. Just wanna recap a couple of things that we've spoken about. We've talked about the opportunity. Why now is a great time to be launching or relaunching your existing business or launching a brand new business from home. There is no expectation that you need to go back to the office and there is no expectation that if you're a small freelancer or agency that you need to have a, a, an office uh, space. 
Uh, Georgia Butterfield says, so glad you're doing this, Troy. What day do we get the free spreadsheet? I'm in the US. You will get that Tuesday afternoon, Georgia. You will get that spreadsheet Tuesday afternoon. It is 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday. Uh, we will be, I'll be walking you through that spreadsheet and then we will give that spreadsheet away on the call. You will need to turn up to the call to get that spreadsheet. Can this training work for people in other industries? Absolutely, come on. Uh, dude, hang around for Wednesday for you, come on, because you're in Australia. Hang around for Wednesday when I give you this spreadsheet. It's going to completely open your mind uh, and really help you understand the, the, the numbers behind running a home-based business. Uh, well, any business really, but it's really uh, dialed in and, and specifically built for home-based businesses. And then Friday, we're going to walk you through the entire matrix for winning clients from home. Uh, what else have we talked about today? We've talked about the five typical responses to a uh, crisis, uh, denial, freaking out, limbo, optimistic, and uh, taking control. And you guys have identified where you're at. We really want to get you guys to that taking control part because the decisions that you make now will dramatically affect your outcome in 12 months time. We've also talked about the study that Slack did and the Global Workplace Analytics did uh, and uh, have we've kind of proven that there is this, this massive opportunity for working from home and that the world has shifted towards that. Noah says, love it, Troy Dean. Hey, Noah, there's Noah. He's going to be live with us tomorrow. We've also talked about the, um, the reasons that companies will hire you uh, and that will outsource and contract you, outsource work to you and contract to you because it gives them a larger pool of talent. Uh, it's most of the time cheaper for them because they're not paying for the infrastructure of having employees, as in renting office space, paying for equipment and insurances, and they can get stuff done quicker because they work across multiple time zones. We've talked about the different business models, consulting, coaching, and online courses, and we've talked about the type of work that you can be doing from home and the type of clients that you can target. Anita Robinson says, are there any resources to get us going to look at? Absolutely, Anita. Uh, I would get on over to the wpelevation.com website. There is a blog and a podcast with, I don't know, over 250 episodes now on the podcast. So hang around on the blog and the podcast there and just go searching for stuff. You'll find a bunch of stuff there that will help you. Um, <laughs> cool, Troy. Your home needs painting, says, come on. Uh, Matt, wanted to ask about getting clients, but I see that's coming. Yes, Matt, that's coming up on um, Friday. We're going to talk about that over, the, the whole week we'll be talking about that anyway. So tune in tomorrow, tune in Wednesday. Wednesday's going to be a real eye-opener. This spreadsheet just gives you the basic numbers. If you want to design, and it really what the spreadsheet allows you to do is design what outcome you want by the end of the year. So wherever you're at now, let's say you want to do 300K by the end of you know, in a 12 month period working from home, we're just gonna lay the numbers out and show you exactly what that looks like. And it's not as hard as you think, okay? When you break the numbers down, it's simple math, it's not as hard as you think, it just requires focus and having a couple of systems in place. If you could do one thing to get new business for consulting, what would it be? Great question, Robert. Um, if I could do one thing, well, the one thing leads to many other things, but if there's one thing I could do, to get new business for consulting, it would be to develop my own signature system. And we're gonna talk about that on Friday. Uh, it is to develop a signature system uh, which allows you to differentiate from everyone else who does your thing. So if you're a copywriter, you don't wanna sell copywriting services. If you're a web designer, you don't wanna sell web design. If you're a videographer, you don't wanna sell video services because they're all commodities and you can buy all of those things fairly cheaply on marketplaces. So you wanna have a signature system, a unique process that you take clients through that differenti differentiates you, and that's how you get paid premium fees because they can't get it anywhere else, they have to get it from you. And we're gonna talk a lot about that on Friday, uh, but we'll be touching on that right throughout the week. Simon Kelly's dropped a great blog post in here, The Definitive Guide to Winning Clients. Uh, in fact, if you just type in The Definitive Guide to Winning Clients into Google, uh, in fact, I think you need to type in WordPress. Uh, the definitive guide to winning WordPress clients into Google will come up as number one there. It's a fantastic article. It's from 2000 and I think I wrote that in 2016. It has been updated recently, uh, but it is a, a fantastic article uh, and there's tons of free content in there. Um, Robert, I hope that was helpful. Uh, signature system, uh, put your thinking cap on and go research signature system. You'll find a bunch of free resources online as well that will really help you. All right, uh, so just again, coming up tomorrow, Noah Britton is the case study. How does this man get clients without leaving the house? 
How does this man get clients without leaving the house? Noah Britton is my friend from the west coast of the state. I believe he's in Washington state. Is that right, Noah? Or did you actually move to Canada? I can't remember whether you are in Seattle or if you've actually now jumped the border and are living in Canada. Please let me know in the comments, Noah. That would be great. Um, tomorrow morning, Sydney time, 10 o'clock. Uh, that is Monday afternoon for you people in Los Angeles at 5 p.m. And for you people on the East Coast, it is 8 p.m. Monday night. Uh, we, are, we will have Noah Britton live here on Facebook walking you through his entire process for attracting leads and converting them into clients working from home. He has not met one of his clients in real life for the last two years. Uh, he's in Seattle. Oh, yeah, in Seattle. There we go. Uh, and he is going to be live tomorrow on the case study. So super excited about that. Uh, and again, if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments. I will come back uh, and, and check in on the replay over the next 24 hours. I do need to bounce out of here very shortly, though. There is toast and coffee brewing in the kitchen. I can smell it, and that's where I'm headed. I'm going to go and say hello to Goldie, uh, who is just gone four weeks and uh, spend some time with my wife while she is at home at the moment as well. Um, and again, that's just the beauty of working from home, having that freedom and that flexibility to do that. So that's what I'm about to do. Hope this has been super helpful for you guys. Um, leave your questions in the comments and I'll uh, come back to them over the next 24 hours and get as many of your questions answered as possible. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Again, just a quick update. Noah Britton is here live tomorrow. So make sure you get on over to our Facebook page and click the Get Notified button. Yeah, make sure... Um, uh, my clients are great, but traffic in Seattle is horrible, says Noah. So make sure you get on over to our Facebook page. Uh, just go to WP Elevation Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash WP Elevation, and you'll find it. Click the Get Notified button, and we'll notify you when we go live tomorrow. And the case study is with Noah Britton. How does this man get clients without leaving the house? It's all here live on Facebook tomorrow. Thanks, guys. You've been a great audience. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.